What's up guys, Agent here again with a theory crafting video slash build video. This is uh, more of a response to a lot of comments that I've seen on Reddit, on the official forums, on a couple of discourse that I'm a part of um, that really grind my gears as a endgame player, as somebody who makes builds and basically runs endgame content. Um, and that's the comment that Ola Reme is not the best set in all situations. Now, Nephis has already done a video explaining why Olorime is better than Spellfire Cure, and I have a link to that in the description below. I think it's a very good video, and he pretty much goes over um, point for point why Olorime out basically is better than Spellfire Cure in pretty much every capacity. But I'm going to do my own take on this uh, so you guys can get basically a second opinion, so to speak, as to basically why Olorime is better than Spellfire Cure in pretty much every single way you can think of. So starting things off here, let's go over each of the gear themselves. So first off, uh, let me see if I can find Spell Power Cure first. I might uh, hear Spell Power Cure. So Spell Power Cure is a dungeon set. So you can get it from White Gold Tower, so you will need access to the Imperial City DLC in order to grab it. Ola Rime, on the other hand, is a light armor set that comes from the Trial Cloud Rest. So you will have need to have access to the Summer Set expansion in order to get Ola Rime's. Now, this in itself already kind of, you can see that there's going to be a little bit of an issue here. Because the expansion, Summer Set, is not the same thing as a DLC. You need to purchase Summer Set separately in order to get access to Summer Set versus uh, having the Imperial City DLC while you can purchase it separately. That, that comes with ESO Plus. So if you're an ESO Plus subscriber, you already have access to Spell Power Cure, but you might not have access to Ola Rime. That being said, though, we are still going to be assuming that you are able to obtain both of these sets in our comparisons. So Spell Power Cure, let me find it again. Spell Power Cure, the 2 and the 3 piece adds max magicka, the 4 piece adds spell damage, and the 5 piece, when you heal a friendly target that is at 100% health, you have a 50% chance to give them major courage for 10 seconds, which increases their weapon and spell damage by 258. Now let's take a look over at Ola Rime. The 2 piece gives you magicka regen, the 3 piece gives you minor ages, which reduces the damage you take from dungeon, trial, and arena monsters by 5%. The four piece adds 129, uh, again, magic regen. The five piece, if you have the perfected version and you have five perfected pieces, you get max magicka. The actual five piece, this is the same between the perfect and imperfect version. Casting abilities that leave an area of effect on the ground in combat will leave a circle of might for 10 seconds. You and your allies standing in a circle gain major courage for 30 seconds, increasing your weapon spell damage by 258. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. So, first thing we're going to be looking at are going to be the actual bonuses themselves. The three, two, three, and four piece bonuses. Now, the two, three, four piece bonuses for Spell Power Cure are Magic Magicka, Max Magicka, Spell Damage. So, you're not really getting any additional regen here. You're getting more resources and you're getting stronger heals out of your Spell Power Cure uh, compared to Olurime, where you're pretty much only getting Magicka regen between the two and the four piece. Now, Olurime does have one really nice bonus, and that's that three piece Minor Aegis bonus. That reduces your damage taken by 5% while you're in a dungeon, trial, or an arena. Very nice to have pretty important i would say it's pretty important to have um as a healer some form of survivability whether that's in being able to be you know heal yourself very quickly fast reactions on mechanics or in this case having minor ages so yes while you are giving up resources and you're giving up your spell damage uh you do get some max magical regen and you also gain minor ages as well and that survivability cannot be un um understated over us or overstate it any anymore um, that additional survivability is very important the success of a trial is very dependent on the success of their support roles and if minor aegis basically lets you stay alive longer it lets you stay alive throughout the entire fight then my obviously my 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 personal preference would be to run all remay not spell power cure because if you're dying with spell power cure but you're not dying with all the an alive healer heals things a dead healer doesn't so that's kind of a point for Olurime when you look at the 2, 3, 4 piece. Although, again, that's not to say Spill Power Cures 2, 3, 4 pieces are bad. I just think Olurime is going to be a little bit more useful overall. Now let's look at the 5 piece. Now, there are a couple of weird mechanics with Spell Power Cure and Olurime that I want to clear up right away. So Spell Power Cure, while it does not say it in the ability, uh, in the set uh, 5 piece thing, 
it does have a cap. It is capped to six people, and there is a cooldown to it. It doesn't say it has a cooldown, but there is an internal cooldown. As long as six people have Spell Power Cure active, you cannot reactivate Spell Power Cure. So you can't have it activate on everybody in your group. It can only be active on those six people, and it'll only reactivate itself once people start to lose that Spell Power Cure buff. It's been this way ever since it's been released, and it has remained this way throughout all the different patch iterations that have come since. So that's pretty important to remember here. Spell Power Cure has a six person limit. The other thing too with Spell Power Cure is that you need to basically overheal. So it'll only activate on somebody who has at full health and you heal them. There's a 50% chance that it will not proc and there's 50% chance it will proc, but in most instances it will proc when, when you want it to. So that's another thing that you also have to keep in mind with Spell Power Cure. It's not like you can basically cast a healing ability and automatically get six people Spell Power Cure, or in this case, Major Courage, you need to make sure they're at full health first. So you might need to heal them once or twice. You might need to make sure they have a heal over time on them, like Mutagen or something like that, or even Healing Springs, in order to get that going. So that's kind of the other thing, too, that Spell Power Cure is relying on. It's relying on you being able to heal people, and it is capped at those six people. All of Rimei, on the other hand, doesn't have person cap. So we've tested this plenty of times when it was, when Somerset was first announced on the PTS. We've tested it since it was released on live there is no limit in the amount of people who can be affected by olorime so you can get all 11 of your of your other group mates in the trial to all jump in that olorime circle and they will all get major courage that gives it a huge step up compared to spell power cure which remember is capped at six people max and you cannot break that cap at all so olorime already beat out spell power cure that way so if you guys remember before somerset the meta for healers was in trials were for both healers to run spell power cure and the rationale for that is that six person cap on spell power cure there's no way for you to hit all of your dps with spell power cure with just one person running it at most there will only be usually five people who are getting it assuming you don't have pets who are stealing it so the volatile familiar and the twilight matriarch will steal and the bear as well the bear ultimate they will steal a spell power cure buff if they are eligible to grab it the system will will prioritize players over pets, but if pets have the spell power cure buff, there's no way for it to be applied to another player until that pet loses that buff. Now, with pets being invincible and basically always being at full health in trials, pets, if they're eligible, they will take that spell power cure buff and they will always be eligible for that spell power cure buff. So that's kind of another point in Olorime's favor here. So that's something that's pretty important and that's one of the main reasons why Olorime is so powerful because now instead of having two healers both run spell power cure you can have one healer run all the remake instead that opens up another set bonus a set slot for that second healer so now instead of doing something like spell power cure worm spell power cure uh ia now you can just do something like all the and jg and then spell power or not spell power cure infallible aether and mending or or infallible aether and worm basically that gives you an additional set if you're running all the and that's the main draw of all the basically opens up that additional set bonus for a healer to use and that cannot be emphasized enough it is much more important to have an additional set bonus than it is to run spell power cure the other thing too is the duration of the buff itself so all the lasts for 30 seconds if you have jg when then it, it's lasts for 42 seconds spell power cure on the other hand lasts for 10 seconds so if you just do the quick math all the may last three times as long now there is one thing that i do want to mention here that i believe is why people say all may is not better than spc in mobile fights which is the main argument that i've seen the main argument that i've seen is that in fights where your dps are moving around a lot all the may loses their spell power cure the reason for that is when you cast an ability, so this is what the older mirror proc looks like. I actually need to get into combat in order for it to show up. So whenever you cast an AoE ability like blockade or um, budding siege or anything like that, this is what this, this is what the older mirror proc looks like. It's basically a circle on the ground, and so you can see here that the circle doesn't move, and it's relying on where you're being able to place it. So what a lot of people argue on Reddit on the official forums is for mobile fights where the DPS are moving around a lot, they might not be stepping into that circle all that often. Now, there is a counter argument to this, and that's basically you as the healer need to anticipate where your DPS are going to go, and the DPS will need to be able to recognize when Olorume is put down and to recognize 
hey, I need to step in that in order to get my major courage buff. It's basically a learn to play issue, um, both for the healers and DPS. Um, and yes, it is a valid argument that the Overmere proc pretty much stays in place for 10 seconds and you can't rem you can't uh, move it around for those 10 seconds. That's, that is a valid, you know, criticism of the set itself. However, like I said, it is on the healer to know where to place it. So a classic example of where people think, oh, you can't run Ola Rime here would be the twins in Vimar because your group is split up into two, two parties, one for each twin, uh, and you know, there are color swaps going on. So your group might be swapping here and there. Now, the one thing you want to keep in mind here is that Ola Rime lasts for 30 seconds and it's often paired with JG. So the buff lasts for 42 seconds. The circle lasts for 10 seconds. So basically you can step in the circle once and basically ignore the next two procs. The next two procs of Ola Rime. You can ignore those entirely and still maintain major courage. So that's kind of on the healer. So in Vima, a lot of endgame groups are still running Ola Rime because the healer with Ola Rime can basically place the heal on their group. DPS steps in it, grabs the buff, other swaps happen, or the Ola Rime proc goes away. The healer then just puts the heal on the other side and the other side gets the major courage buff now so yes it is a valid criticism but it is not something i don't think it is a good criticism because just by learning to anticipate where your dps are going and dps anticipating where you're going to place the ultimate proc that completely negates that criticism itself so you'll find that even in Asylum, even in Cloudrest, we are running Ola Rime because our GPS know where we have to be. We know we recognize where the proc is. We know we have to touch it once every 30 seconds or once every 42 seconds in order to get the proc. Now, the argument for mobile fights still resonates with spell power cure as well because it's reliant on healing. You need to actively heal in order to proc spell power cure. So in Maw, Yes, you can proc spell power cure on your group itself, and that's perfectly fine. But if your other healer isn't wearing spell power cure, then you can't get it on the other side. The other thing too is it only procs on overheal, so if you're constantly taking damage and your DPS are constantly, you know, their health is going up and down, up and down, you might never get a chance to proc SPC that way. And again, it's reliant on your healing abilities. It's relying on you being able to anticipate where they're going and to heal them up appropriately. So in that instance, Olorme still wins out because you don't have to step into every single proc. You can step into one in every third proc in order to maintain your major courage. One in every four if you have JG applied to Olorme as well. And you'll find that in a lot of endgame trial guilds. Uh, I stream my runs. I stream Mayflower and Hellfire. Tabitha streams Symbolic. Alcast obviously streams with Hodor. And you'll find that their healers are pretty much running Olorme for every single fight in the game. Cloudrest, Asylum, the Twins, and Maw. Um, there's really very few instances where you would argue that the older Rime being a static ring is actually a detriment. The only real argument would maybe be the refabrication committee in Hoff, and even then, you just do the exact same thing you do for, for Maw, in that DPS just got to be aware of where it's being placed and run into it every 30 seconds. Um, so I don't consider that a valid criticism. Uh, well, I should say, while I consider that a valid criticism, there are plenty of arguments against it, and it ultimately it is a learn-to-play issue. And I think that's kind of the main reason why people think that Older Rime is not as good as SBC in mobile fights, because they haven't really gotten the chance to practice with it and to learn with uh, learn it. Uh, the, the big thing that I've heard is, oh, for pug runs you want to run SBC, and that's not necessarily going to be the case. Again, SBC, again, if we take a look at it, it's relying on healing somebody at full health if the dps keeps on taking damage because they're stepping in red because they're you know they're a pug or something like that then you're they're not gonna get very good uptime on spc i heard somebody argue oh i can get 90 percent uptime on spc um you know in a pug and i'm just like that's in, in in a pug trial and i'm like that's not mathematically possible because you can't apply it to all your dps uh so you know Compare that to Olorime, where one healer can get 100% uptime or close to 100% uptime on major for or major courage on everybody, as long as the DPS and the healer are cognizant and you know conscious of where the proc is going and things like that. It's they're, they're, to me, it's really a no-brainer. Olorime pretty much outstrips out SPC in every single way. 
Um, it lasts longer, you can apply it to more people, it's uh, less reliant on having to overheal, and you also get minor Aegis as a bonus. The only downside of Elder Rime is you gotta run Cloud Rest, so if you don't have access to Cloud Rest, you can't grab it, but the same can be said for SBC, where if you don't have access to Lightfold Tower, you can't get SBC. So, that is my opinion on why Elder Rime is better than SBC, and a lot of endgame healers agree with this sentiment. Uh, again. I have a link down in the comment section, uh, down in the description for Nephis' take on this thing. And Nephis, he tanks. You see him tanking DPS very often, but he used to heal. He, he was a pretty good healer back in, back when he used to heal very often. Tabata swears by Ola Rime. Um, all the other endgame healers I know, Heals the Fields, um, Style Anima, they all swear by Ola Rime. And they've, while they still hold on to SPC, you know, in the case that it might come back one day for some certain piece of content, ultimately Ola Rime is just by and far much more superior than SPC. So if anybody tells you that no other Rime is not good, uh, you just run SPC instead, show them Nephis' video, show them this video, show them you know, a stream of tablets where they are running Older Rime and, and ask them again, do you really think SPC is better than Older Rime in these scenarios? So that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments about this debate, if you're feeling down in the comment section below, I'll try to get back to them as quickly as I can. Hope you guys found this video informative, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.